So it's been about three months since I started my astrophotography journey, and I gotta say, it's easily one of the most amazing hobbies I could have ever decided to pick up. Also, probably one of the most complicated. Sometimes it feels like I'm drinking water from a fire hose with all the information that I'm taking in on a daily basis, and every day I try and learn something new. There's just so much to learn with this hobby, whether it's getting better, but getting more familiar with your equipment, uh, calibrating your images a little bit better, or just learning new editing techniques to really improve the quality of your images. But it is also one of the most satisfying hobbies ever. I only recently learned that you could actually photograph these deep sky objects from your backyard, and I felt like I've been missing out on so much for my entire life because I've been fascinated with the space since I was a child, and I only recently learned that we could do this. I mean, what other hobby allows you to look tens of thousands of light years away at objects you could never see in your daily life, and some people don't even know these exist unless you're actually searching for it. And it's just been an absolute pleasure sharing this hobby with everybody through live streams and videos like this. So I do want to say thank you to everyone because y'all have been so amazing and inspiring me to do better each and every day. And today we're going to be photographing the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, which is 2,400 light years away. And another thing that's great about this hobby is it's kind of like we're time travelers. Because when we're photographing this nebula, we're photographing how it was when that photon of light left. So that means we're looking at it 2,400 years in the past. Because that's how long it takes for that photon of light to travel from that area of space all the way to our planet to reach our sensor so we could actually image it. That's fascinating. I absolutely love that. Today we're going to be taking the highest quality image we have ever taken on the channel so far. It's going to be a close to 50 hours worth of data all stacked calibrated which means we're taking hundreds and hundreds of images to make an absolutely crisp and beautiful photo the elephant's trunk nebula is in the constellation cepheus and as we mentioned it is about 2400 light years away and it's filled with interstellar gas and dust now this area is also a star forming region especially in the, uh, in the elephant's trunk itself, which is a very dense cloud, and it's got this sinuous glow around it, which is being illuminated by a truly massive star. Now you can see this little circle in the center of the dense cloud, and this is actually where tons of baby stars are being born. It's a truly beautiful area of space, and honestly, a very, very difficult target to photograph. I've got two of my first images were of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, and they were personal failures of mine when I first started because I didn't understand how difficult it was to actually photograph this area of space. It was really a bad first target for me. So I'll put those up on screen now. Not very good, but the image that we're going to get today is amazing. So I've already done about five nights worth of imaging on this, and this is the sixth night that we're going to be photographing this area of space. And we're doing this all on our Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, paired with a Skywatcher 100mm ED APO. And we've also got the new ZWO ASI 6200mm. And this is actually my first finished image with this camera. And good lord, is this a good camera? I'll leave links to all this stuff in the description below if you're curious about all of the equipment but I am incredibly pleased with the quality from all of this. I've also got my second telescope up, so I'm imaging more things with this at the same time. So I'm actually graduated from one telescope a night to actually running two a night. And that over there is going to be the EQ86R Pro with a Skywatcher 150mm ED APO. And we're using our Starlight Express CCD, which is a bit of a different imaging technology. We are still shooting a narrow band on both of these cameras, which means it's a monochrome camera, and we're taking three different wavelengths of light. Uh, we're photographing the hydrogen alpha, which photographs all of the hydrogen, well, the lights emitted by hydrogen gas in the area, and that is the most prevalent of all elements in space. That is going to be our very high resolution, high quality image where we get all of our detail from. Then we're going to be photographing in Sulfur 2, which is going to be assigned to the red palette. 
the hydrogen alpha is assigned to green. Uh, but the sulfur 2 photographs the light emitted by sulfur in the region and only that. And then we've got oxygen 3, which is assigned to blue. And that is going to be photographing the oxygen 3 in the region. And these three images are combined into what we call the Hubble palette. This is what you'll see when you're basically whenever you're Googling images of space and you're looking at anything from the Hubble Space Telescope, it's the same palette that they use. It's highly detailed or highly accurate in the details within the nebula, but it is still considered a false color image, but they do end up being very beautiful. So our first image of the night has come in and I want to show the difference between one image and what a stacked image is going to look like. Now I've already kind of processed this, this data before, so I do have a stacked version already, uh, but this is what it looks like after just one photo. And the reason why we stack them is because we gain signal and lose noise. So when you stack enough photos together, you make this. All right, so we've got about 50 hours worth of data. Most of that is in our H alpha. We've got about, I'd say 25 hours in H alpha, and then close to 15 of each in O3 and S2, which is pretty good. So this is gonna get assigned to green, this is going to get assigned to the blue, and then S2 gets assigned to red. Now I'm going to go through a montage of editing this so you can kind of see the evolution of the photo, but I will have a full-blown tutorial on how to edit like this on my other channel, which I'll leave linked in the description below. So it took six days, over 50 hours, and over 250 images all stacked and calibrated, and a couple extra hours worth of editing to create this beautiful image of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula.